Are you getting sick of your strategy getting chopped up like this? Order. Order submit. Order filled. Order submit. Order. Try adding this indicator next time you're building a strategy. Order, or, or, order filled. In this video, we're going to go over how to use the ADX indicator to help us avoid choppy price action. Now, is this indicator perfect? Absolutely not. Are you going to miss really good trades with this on? Most definitely. But trading is not about catching every single move. It's about increasing the probabilities in your favor. And that's what we're hoping to do with this indicator. So let's go over it. So first of all, what is the ADX? The ADX is used to measure the strength of the trend. So typically, the higher the ADX, the stronger the trend. Now, it doesn't really matter if the trend is going up or if it's coming down. Your ADX is just going to measure the strength of that trend. So in most cases, this is going to be used in a very similar way, whether you're trying to enter long or you're trying to enter short. It's just going to help ensure we are only taking trends when there is a strong trend present. Now, many of you on Discord, and by the way, it's free to join. There's a free trial and a bunch of other Ninja Trader related content in there. Link is down below. But I've been getting a lot of messages about the strategy I was testing the last few weeks that recently passed one of the evals. Now, I'm not saying this is going to continue to work in the future. I'm actually looking to adjust a few things. So you set your own risk, but we're going to build that exact same strategy in this video because it serves as a good example of how the ADX works to help us avoid choppy price action. All right, so here I have the Predator loaded and we're just going to recreate the same settings from the template. For most of my strategies, I like to usually have at least one confirmation candle that just adds one more candle in the same direction after your entry point. It just gives you a little bit more confirmation that your entry is valid. Next, I'm going to select the show MA cross button. And this is just going to reveal the moving averages that you're going to use for your crossover entry. So first we have our EMA and I change this to a period of nine. And then for the slow one, I was using a 21. So when the nine EMA crosses the 21, that is when we enter at the MA cross. So make sure we have this selected. Now we scroll down to our oscillators and we select the ADX. And this is very straightforward in how it's set up. You basically just select the ADX period. You want to select your lower line and your upper line. Now, by default, the Predator comes with the same settings that are default in the actual built-in ADX indicator. And all this does is it's going to filter your trades. So let me expand this so we can see the full writing. And let's read what it says. It's trade below the lower line. When we have this selected, it means it's going to allow trades to happen if our ADX is below the lower line. So below 25 in this case, or whatever you have selected. In most cases, because we're looking for a stronger trend, we want to have this unselected. We actually want to take trades above this line, but it's there as an option for those that want to customize and mess around with their own settings. Next, we have the trade between the lower and upper line. And this is often regarded as the best area for your ADX to be in in order to enter a trade. When we're above the lower line, that means we have a pretty good trend going on. But when we're still below the upper line, that means there's still possible continuation left over in the move. The majority of users are going to want to enter trades between these two levels when they're using ADX. Now, lastly, we also have the option to trade above the upper line. When the ADX reaches this level, it could signify that it's a really, really strong trend or there's an impending reversal coming. I know some users that want to avoid taking trades when the ADX reaches this level, but others only want to take trades when the ADX reaches this level. So really it's up to you and what you're looking for in your strategy. For the template I'm building today, I'm going to leave it off. I only want to take trades between the lower and the upper lines. So that's all there is to the ADX. Let's just set up our order and run it on the playback to see how it works. All right, so we're just going to select a quick ATR stop. The stop loss is okay at 1.5. I'm going to set an automatic quantity. I just want to risk $100 per trade. I'm trying to keep my risk size small. 
I was using this just on a 25K account, so I'm not risking four or $500 per trade. Again, just a small amount for what I'm working with, but you guys can customize this however you want. Next, for my first profit target, just a quick ATR. I'm going to set this at 0.9 ATR, and this is how most of my strategies go. I usually try and scalp a quick move first, and then I'll start trailing the rest of my position later. So for my first target, I don't set any break evens, I don't set any trail stops, but I do set up a second target. Again, I'm going to do an ATR profit. This second profit target, I'm putting it a little farther away to capture a bit more profit. However, I'm not letting it go all the way back to my stop if the price reverses. So I'm going to set a quick trail stop. I'm going to trail it by 1.1 times the current ATR. And I'm going to start trailing this once it reaches my first risk to reward unit. And this is just the distance between my entry point and my initial stop multiplied and added as a target. So once it reaches that point, it's going to trail by the current ATR multiplied by 1.1. And this is going to be a pretty tight stop Again, I'm just working with a 25K account and we're working with the Apex Drawdown. So I'm just trying to take quick profits. I'm not trying to give any of that back and get my account blown by the trailing drawdown. Now for my final target, again, I'm going to set a market order. I'm not going to set a profit target, but I am going to start trailing and again, I'm going to keep this trail stop at the same distance of 1.1R. It's going to start at the same time when it hits our 1R distance. But because there's no profit target, this is going to be more of a home run runner. So if the price just keeps moving and moving, it's going to be a very small position size. So I'm not risking a lot, but I could capture a little bit more profit. All right, so here we have it enabled on the chart. I'm just going to run it so we can see how it works. And all we're looking for order submitted. And all we're looking for is our 9 EMA, that's the blue line, to cross the yellow 21 EMA. And as you can see, it already did. And our ADX is above our lower blue line. So this short entry was a valid trade. Order filled. So we hit our first two profit targets and we're just trailing the last remaining runner. Order filled. So we just got stopped out. That's okay. We'll keep going. Order, order filled. All right, so here we had a crossover in the long direction this time. So we can see it crossed over. The ADX is above the blue line. It's a valid long trade. So it played out pretty much the same as well. It got stopped out on the little wick. We might have to adjust our profit targets when the trail stop starts and the distance of that trail stop. Again, this was just a test I was running the last couple of weeks. There's still a lot more adjustments that can be made, but hopefully you guys can use this as an example for your own strategy. So let's keep playing and see a few more examples. Or, or, order fill or order submitted order again, filled again we got a short entry and then a long entry order filled and one more thing if you want to exit your current position and re-enter in the opposite direction you can always select the rev up option with the arrows on the side and if you're in a long trade and a valid short trade appears, it'll exit you out of your position and re-enter you in that opposite direction. Same thing if you're short, it'll re-enter you in the long position. So I'm going to leave that on. And again, just hit play. And as you can see, we had some crossovers here. We went up, down, up, down, but our ADX was below the blue line. This means we were not in a good trend, so there are no valid entries here. It just so happened that it did end up saving us from quite a few losses. So again, I'm going to keep playing. It's just super choppy right there, and I'm glad we had that ADX. Order filled. Order submitted. So here, 
we finally start getting a little bit of a better trend on the short side. We picked some of that up for the long side and we managed to get a quick scalp in. Order, or order filled. All right, so let's see what happened here. We had a crossover to the short side, which is fine. It got stopped out and we should have reversed the position, but because all of these candles down here were on the same or very similar timestamps, it seems that Ninja is not really processing this. This is why I always say it's best to test your strategy in a live setting on a SIM account, because although market replay is a lot better than historical strategy analyzer, it's still not super realistic of what happens in a real life scenario. So here it didn't process a long trade until 18,627.5, uh, but our stop was still set much lower where the price never actually touched. So guys, just keep things in mind where playback will sometimes give weird results like this where real life might not actually play out like this. Anyways, we're going to keep playing it. It's just a test. It's just playback doesn't really mean anything. So here we had another short trade. We got a quick scalp and then the lower ADX actually prevented us from entering this choppy price action. So again, I'm going to keep playing it and just run through a few more examples and then we'll cut the video short. Order, order, fi order filled. Order filled, order, order filled. So again, here we just got a stop out from a long trade. That's fine. Quick little scalp, stop out on the rest. It happens, but the ADX prevented all of these other losses. Then we got back in once it was up again for another quick scalp. Order, order filled. Order, order filled. So just a couple more winners there. Order it's submitted. It's not going to always be perfect. We are going to miss quite a few trades where we look back and we think, ah, oh, maybe the ADX isn't as great because I missed this one trade. But look at all the other ones that it prevented from taking place. Without the ADX, this would have been deep, deep into the negative today. So just keep that in mind, guys. We're not trying to take every single trade. We're just using this to take the highest quality of trades. Or order filled. Order submitted. Or order, fi order filled. Or order filled, order filled, or order filled, or order filled. So again, I just want to point out, look at all of these crossovers that it avoided. Most of these would have been losers. And then once we get actual good trends going on, we enter for some quick scalps. And again, I'm not saying trade like this. I'm just showing this as an example. With this strategy, I found the first week I ran it, ended up just about break even. The second week I ran it was quite a bit better and ended up passing an eval. It definitely needs a lot more testing. It's there if you guys want to use it, use it at your own risk. But I hope you guys found this video useful when it comes to ADX and hopefully it helps you with your own strategy. So I'm going to cut it there. As always, take care. Enjoy.